Jamboard is my new favorite tool in the Google apps. It's so much fun and just the possibilities are endless with it. So just you guys are so creative. I know you're going to come up with some really, really good ones. I'm going to give you the basics and I'm going to give you some ideas to, to start. And then you guys can just go crazy with these. So Jamboard is an interactive whiteboard. I think it will be great to use with your virtual students just to increase engagement. I know that they probably feel kind of isolated out there. So this would be great for them to feel like they're part of a class. Um, you can get to Jamboard, of course, just like all the Google apps, many, many ways. So from your Google Drive, you can click your waffle and just scroll down and Jamboard is listed here. Or you can go to new in your Google Drive and go to more and then Jamboard is listed there. So lots of ways to get to it, just like all the Google apps. So when you are here, all of your tools are gonna to be down the left side. There's a pen tool, and when you click on it once, you get the pen. If you click on it again, you get some pen options as far as thickness of, of your mark and then some colors. So you can choose whatever you want to, and it just writes on your screen, okay? like that. Um, you have an eraser tool that you can go through and erase if you need to. This selection tool, the, the best way I can describe it is it, it gets you off of the pen tool. So if you get stuck on the pen tool and you just keep making marks everywhere, just click that selection tool and then your cursor just becomes a cursor again. The sticky note is one of the most popular tools on here. You can choose the color of it. It's a great way for kids to you know, put their ideas up there. It's anonymous, so kids, you know, can put it up there with confidence. No one knows where it came from. Um, they can put anything they want to and then save it, and it just puts it into a sticky note that is movable around the screen. You can make it bigger. Um, you can edit it, delete it. You can change the order, like move it behind something, but you can add all kinds of sticky notes in different colors all around your board and then just move them around. Um, another one is a picture tool. So you can add an image. You get lots of options here. You can upload an image. You can get one from your camera. You can do, this was probably a most popular one, do a Google image search. You can get a picture from your driver from your Google photos. Um, you can add shapes. So if you just need them to add a circle for some reason, there that is. You've got some color options right here. You can change the border color and the fill color. And then this is a laser pointer. It doesn't leave a mark. It just circles for a second. So you just circle and then it slowly fades away. So if you need to draw the student's attention to some particular place on your jam board, you can use the laser pointer to do that. And it just dissipates after a little bit. As far as navigating through Jamboard, this is going to be your navigation center right here at the top. So you can see that I have nine jams in this Jamboard. And if you click this little button on the bottom, it expands this frame bar and you can see it. It kind of looks like Google Slides the way it's organized. And you can drag and drop and reorganize these. So if you decide you want this one to be at the front, you just move it like that and you can reorganize. You can even add more in the middle. So if you're like, oh, I want one right in between these two, you just hit the plus add frame and you get a new one right there. If you need a new frame at the beginning, you would hit this one. So this is how you can kind of get a, an overview of everything you have and add them in there. So I'm gonna click that. You can also cycle through to the next frame. So on this one, I just want to show you how you might interact with students. So on this frame, you can add a text box and just drag it. And you can type an instruction to them. So with an emoji picture, tell me how you are oops, feeling today. And then you can just leave that on there. And then the kids can go to the picture, add image, go to a Google search and do um, happy emoji. And they can select this and then insert it. 
And then this is how they can tell you how they're feeling today. So it's just a really quick interactive way to get some emotion out of the students. Um, one thing to kind of be aware of, and I'll show you this later, this clear frame button is up for grabs for anybody. And when you hit clear frame, it's going to clear everything that's not stuck to the background. So I'm going to hit clear frame here and everything goes away. So just want to let you know that that is a possibility in class. I don't announce that to students. Some of them, you know, we're going to find it anyway, but just kind of keep that. It's a good thing if you ever do want to clear everything out, then you can start fresh really easily. But just want to let you know that kids have that option too. So I'm going to go to the next frame. I've set this as my background, and I recommend that for anything that you don't want to disappear suddenly, make it the background. So you might use this and, you know, a teacher might say, okay, put a circle over, I don't know, one of the capitals of Europe during World War II. So you could use this tool and use this circle tool. And I see London here, so I'm going to draw my circle over London. And you can even make it transparent. So you can still see London through it, and you can see that I've circled it. So you could say, put a transparent circle over a capital in Europe. Or you could say, you know, I'm going to circle a place with my laser, and you tell me something that happened here during the war. Okay? And you would have to tell them something. Whoever you choose would have to tell you something that happened there. So just some ways to do that. Now, if I do clear frame on this one, my circle goes away. But remember, I saved the picture as the background. So it doesn't go away when you clear frame. This one I have set my background to a Y axis. So you could have students use the pen tool. And they could actually graph for you on here if you give them a problem and have them graph or something. I'm not going to pretend to be able to do math. But anyway, um, you can use that as your background. And again, clear frame, super easy to restart if you mess up or anything. I really like this one. If you pose a question, you know, we don't, we can't have students grouping together in rooms anymore right now. So this is a kind of a good way. You pose a question and then students somehow indicate whether they agree, disagree. So you can use, you know, just a check mark feature somewhere like if you disagree you can put your check mark there or you can use um just you know put a symbol somewhere showing you agree or disagree so i really like this just to kind of get a poll of the class on an issue oh i love connect four i made this uh, template and i did play it with students earlier this week and they just loved it so you have them take turns playing connect four they get really competitive and I had them playing as a whole class and I broke the class up. Half of the team were the black checkers, half of the class were red checkers. And then each student took a turn getting to play. So it was really fun. So you can do uh, obviously educational stuff, but you can also have fun and take a break every now and then and do something like this. Um, there are some backgrounds that are templates. And if you do set background, there's just the blue dots you could use for all sorts of things. There's the lined paper, there's a larger grid, uh, some different ones. I usually use this where you select your image. So again, you have the, all those image selections, Google image search. If you create one yourself, you can just upload it. You can drag a file there. So that's where I usually set all of my backgrounds. And then again, they can't be removed if you hit clear frame. So here is a Freyer model. I just love Freyer models, and this would be a great way to interact. So you could put a term in the middle here with a text box. You might type photosynthesis and then have students take turns. Say, okay, someone define it here. Someone use it in a sentence here. Someone add a picture of it here. And then someone, you know, add a, a characteristic of it here. And you could have all of the tools used once. You could have someone add a post-it to define it. You could have someone add a picture, you know, so all different kinds of things. And then once you've had so many participate in this one, you can just clear the frame and add your next word 
and you could keep doing this and have lots of kids participating and everybody kind of doing something different. So again, the possibilities are endless and you guys just get creative with it, with what you're using. Um, so one thing I do want to show you is you can always, you know, go back to the previous frame. And once you're at the next frame, this says create a frame. So if you want a new frame, you just hit in your navigation up here to create a frame. So I cannot wait to see what you all come up with. I know it's going to be some good stuff. If you have any questions, just let me know. But have fun with it. Try it out. Um, I think the kids are really going to like it. And have fun jamming. <laughs>